Hello and welcome. In this video, we will learn more about primary and secondary markets. Okay. In the previous video, we learned what a primary market is and what a secondary market is. In this video, we will learn more about them. All right. You know that whenever a company goes to an IPO or offers an IPO, it will be for people with lots of money. It may be movie stars or it may be any investor who has lots of money. Financial institutions and sometimes government also takes it. Okay. So that is primary market. So wherever IPO happens is primary market. And now the question comes, can't the retail investor, people like you and me, apply for an IPO? Of course you can, or of course we can. So we can also apply for an IPO, okay? Along with financial institutions and high net worth individuals. Now, let us take the example of our Oli oil mill. You know that they had offered 1000 shares for the public. Correct? 1000 shares for the public. Let us say that the high net worth individuals or rich people apply for 800 shares or let us say that these people want to buy 800 shares and the financial institutions want to buy 700 shares or they apply for 700 shares at the IPO and let us say that some people like you and me apply for 100 shares that is some person may apply for 5 shares, some, uh, some person may be applying for 10 shares. There is a minimum quantity, quantity to this, okay? There is a minimum size for this, which we will not consider now. We will take it as 100 shares collectively, okay? So people like you and me apply for IPO and the total number of shares is 100. Now, you see that these two friends have only 1000 shares to offer but you can see we have 800 plus 700 plus 100 it is 1600 so there is a demand for 1600 shares where there is a supply of 1000 shares at the IPO so when the demand is more than the offering, then the IPO is said to be oversubscribed. Okay. So IPO is said to be oversubscribed. So when the IPO or when an IPO is oversubscribed, a computer automatically allots shares to people. Okay. So it, it is like a lottery system. So uh, randomly the computer allots shares. So only 1000 shares can be given out. Correct. But here this person wants or many people want, many individuals want 800 shares, many financial institutions want 700 shares and many people like you and me want 100 shares. So using a lottery system, the shares are allotted to them. Alright? Shares are allotted to them. So generally, generally, so these two get the shares. Okay? These two get the shares. And very rarely, retail investors, people like you and me, gets uh, get share allotted to them in an IPO. Alright? Very rarely. Now, this primary market is also known as known market because we know whom we are buying the shares from and these people the promoters know 
who they are selling shares to okay of course they may not know us by name all right they may not know us by name but they know who they are selling their shares to so 800 shares let us say uh, 200 shares gets allot uh, allotted to high net worth individuals so these people know who the 200 shares have gone to and these people anyhow know it is coming from the promoters okay at the ipo and since buyers and sellers are known to each other it is known as known market and when i say known to each other it is not as in friendship okay it doesn't mean that these promoters know the investors like family it is not so it is just that they know them as to whom they are getting the shares from okay next coming to the second condition okay second condition so 1000 shares are being offered at the IPO by this company okay let us say that high net worth individuals or rich people apply for 100 shares okay 100 shares then financial institutions apply for 200 shares people like you and me apply for 500 shares okay so 1000 is being offered 100 300 800 so only 800 shares are in demand and when the offer or offering is more and the demand is less then an IPO is said to be under subscribed now there may be many reasons for this Maybe the shares are being offered at higher price, okay, higher price or people or the investors may not be having confidence in the company or they do not know about the company or some other reasons too. And for whatever the reasons may be, if an IPO is undersubscribed, generally there are some steps that they will take to make sure that it is properly subscribed but let us not go into that but if an ipo is under subscribed then everyone who has applied for it will get shares allocated to them okay that means these people will get 100 shares these people will get 200 shares and the people like you and me who have applied for 500 shares will get our 500 shares okay so when an ipo is undersubscribed everyone gets when it is oversubscribed then it is a lottery system and so everyone may not get okay yes next is our secondary market so let us say that an IPO is undersubscribed and everyone gets the share okay or you can assume it to be oversubscribed also and everyone has got shares allocated to them okay now once the IPO is done and the shares are allocated we can buy it from the stock exchanges through stock brokers generally after two days after ipo two or three days after the ipo the shares will be listed on the stock exchange and from the stock exchange others can buy and sell the shares okay now this secondary market is also known as unknown market because if you want to buy shares of a particular company then you will not be knowing from whom is it coming from or if these want to sell the shares 
to others they will not be knowing to whom they are selling the share to okay so through the broker and through the exchange the transaction happens and the buyer and seller will be unknown the buyer doesn't know who he got the shares from the seller doesn't know who, who he sold the shares to and so it is known as unknown market okay and people like you and me buy from the stock exchange through stock broker and this is called as secondary market all right so i hope you have understood we have few more terminologies to clear in this video before proceeding to the next all right now shares stocks and equity now generally shares stocks and equity are used interchangeably all right but then there is a subtle difference between the three now what is share or what are shares shares usually refers to units of ownership in a specific company okay for example you can say that you own 10 shares of tata motors that means here there is only one company and you have 10 shares of it so if there is only one company involved no matter the amount of uh, shares you call them as shares okay now when we say stocks stocks is the term generally used to refer to the portions of ownership of multiple companies okay for example let us say you have shares of tata motors shares of infosys and shares of lenovo so what you generally say is you have stocks okay you have stocks of various companies shares correspond to single company stocks correspond to multiple companies okay and then equity equity is the term for a total ownership stake in the company okay total ownership stake in the company for example if a company has 10000 shares and you owned 1000 shares of this then you could say you own a 10% equity stake in that company okay so equity is the ownership stake shares is for specific a company stocks for multiple companies okay but generally people use these interchangeably but it is better to know the difference between them all right yes so i hope you have understood the concepts that i have taught you in this video i'll see you in the next video till then take care and thank you for watching